this is money moment so we look at finances uh, we look at finances uh, from the kingdom perspective because we also believe in God and so today uh, as I was thinking what I'm going to share today what am I going to share today I went back to the fundamentals 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 of personal finance you see what what happens is that a lot of us are treating this whole uh, uh, lockdown season as if it will never end yeah some people you switched off your phone people are trying to reach you mm? people you owe money are trying to reach you now they can't reach you and you are going to go back to the same people for more credit when we reopen fundamentals I was thinking about the fact that business, business transactions are built on the bedrock of trust. What are you doing in this season as a business leader, as an economic cooperative, to not ruin whatever is left of your trust? Because you're going to need it. Not only will you need it in this season, but you're going to need it even more when the season is over. All of you are stuck in your homes. I'm stuck in my home. Tell me, which border guy have you been calling to send to the supermarket to buy you this, to buy you katunkuma, to buy you dodo musige and the rest? Which one have you been calling? I bet you you've been calling the border guy that you trust. So when there is a squeeze, competence takes a back seat to trust and character. So it's the guy you trust that you've been calling. Jeremiah Mkisa, all the way from Nairobi, Habari, good to see you, sir. It's, 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 the, it's the person you trust. So, if, if you can do anything for yourself in this season, if you have any trust, if when people look at your name, they can attach certain value and values to it and say, that person does this the way they say they will do it. Do not jeopardize that trust. You're going to need it. Secondly, If you feel like you're in a position where you don't have a lot of it, now is the time to start work on it, working on it. Because trust is going to be your, 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 your currency. When things are in a squeeze and people have to look for a me, just the bare minimum people to work with, trust is your currency. Carolyn Marsh, wow, wow. Good to see you, madam. So trust, uh, today I wanted us to talk about the fundamentals of personal finance and fundamentals of business. Uh, greetings from the UK. Good to see you, Caroline. Thanks so much. You inspired us a lot when you came and we follow you on Facebook. You continue to inspire us a lot. So good to see you, ma'am. Uh, and so fundamentals, fundamentals of, of personal finance and, and, and business. We are in lockdown. You're at home. Everyone is dealing with people they trust. And actually, this principle, I've been teaching it. I taught it last week. And I'm glad that Caroline is, is here today. I just saw her. She's typed in something. She's the one who first taught us this principle about maybe six, seven years ago. When he came with Bev Morel. And he said that business is no longer transactional. It's relational. I mean, how true? How true is that right now? Transactional is out the window. It's now relational. Relational. You can only do business with people you trust because you're not there to see their face and pass them the cash. You're just sending money on, on the phone and hoping they will deliver. So what are you going with? You're going with the people you trust. That's a fundamental. Now, if you're short-sighted and you think that the world will always be in coronavirus until Jesus comes, that's too bad for you. I can tell you this season is going to pass. In fact, in some countries, they've already hit the top of the uh, logarithmic curve and they're starting to come down so they're going to start going back to normal life that means even here in uganda we'll go back to normal life sometime soon what is going to be your currency your currency is trust do not sell trust for anything lose money if you need to but build trust guess what cafe javas is delivering food for free who does that do you know what they're trying to do? They're getting into your heart. They want you to feel like they are your friend. They care about you. Look, if, if, even if you were not in lockdown and you're going to go there physically, you will still have spent the money to go there. 
They will not pay, stop to paying the rent where the restaurants are. But where are they delivering it to you for free? They are building relationship. Because when you have relationship, then you have trust. And trust is the bedrock of transaction. So that's a fundamental. A fundamental. Absolutely relation for sustainable growth, says Caroline Mas. Thanks, Yola, who told this to us. So, so get, let's get back to the fundamentals. Let's get back to the fundamentals of how to do this uh, in a sustainable way. Because again, what some people might, if you're short-sighted, you might be thinking, ah, you get into some sort of sector that's making a lot of money right now, and all you're about is making the money. But money that you make in a short period for a short time it's just a burst of money you'll even throw it away and lose it but the point is the point is to build for the long haul trust is the bedrock of transaction and where does trust come from relationship so what you do right now is build relationship so that you don't lose the trust so trust is the bedrock trust is the bedrock that's a fundamental I, I, I was I was thinking about this uh, concerning fundamentals. I was listening to some other speaker, and they are saying when you go to watch uh, a, a professional sports team uh, in Uganda, mostly we are more used to football. You go to watch a, a professional football team playing, uh, or a professional basketball team, or whatever whoever plays professionally. You know that the rules, like when you watch Champions League, Premier League. On, on television the rules are the same as that small football team in my village the rules are exactly the same the, there is no new dribbling it's not there everything is the same Dr uh, offside is the same scoring is the same defensive tactics is the same uh midfield spread uh, tactics is the same the formations are the same four four two five three one name it whatever it's basically the same what separates the professionals from the amateurs is that the professionals are masters of the fundamentals the professionals are masters of the fundamentals so for you to be in that league, you must become a master of fundamentals. Because people keep thinking that there is, okay, there is innovation. Let's not forget innovation. But sometimes we, 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 we've given innovation more credit than it deserves. Even the people who innovate, who get successful, are masters of the fundamentals. They're masters of the fundamentals. So for you to, to build a long-term... Uh, to build long-term success as a business person or with your personal finances, you become a master of the fundamentals. The masters of the fundamentals means that they've drilled down the fundamentals to a science. They are masters of it. They, they, they don't get it sometime and they, 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 get, they get it sometime. No, 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 no. They are masters of the fundamentals. Thanks, Dr. Eunice Adbang is saying, yes, relationship marketing is what I'm teaching people in, that I'm coaching currently. Totally. Totally. It's it's that the, the bedrock of is trust built on relationship. And then you can have business going. So uh, as a business person, one you need to build that that you need to become a master of that fundamental. Okay? Now let me get to the other part where I wanted to take us as far as being masters of the fundamentals are concerned, which is in personal finance because Typically, when I come here, I'm usually talking to business people and then to individuals about one, your organization's finances, and I've really shouted too much about that, and then your personal finances. Now, the interesting thing is that both personal finances and organizational finances, the fundamentals are the same. You see, you don't need a different kind of gravity to throw down a, a building or something from the sky. Whether it's a person jumping or you're throwing down debris from a multi-story building, it's going to be the same force. So the fundamentals are the same. Now, let me go to the fundamentals of personal finance, the way I understand them. What are the fundamentals of personal finance? There are four. There are only four in our context. In some other contexts, they may be different, but in our context, there are four. Four, four fundamentals 
the four legs that can get your stool steadily uh, positioned so you can sit on it in finance in Uganda are one, income. If you don't have income, this conversation is over. Okay. Income is fundamental one. Two is saving. Saving. You're going to read very many American books about finance that totally don't talk about saving. And in fact, some people are even against saving. Now remember, they can get credit at 1, 2, 3, 4% in their country. Yours is at 24%. You will not make it out. Borrowing money at 24% to invest, you can't do it. So you have to save to invest. So, one, income to savings. How do you save? You don't save after spending. No, 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 no. You save before spending. After you've earned money, if you're a Christian like me, you tithe, that's one. Then two, you save, that's two. And then three, you spend. Spending comes last. I'm talking about being masters of the fundamentals. Some of you are saying because it's coronavirus season, you're not saving. Whatever little money is coming to you, you're eating it. Are you crazy? All these banks have uh, bank agents. And one of those is your friend. You have their phone number. If you don't have one, you can find one through another person. Send your savings to your savings account. When you're saving, you cannot save less than 20% of your income. 20% is the very bare minimum that you have to save from your income. Joseph saved Egypt from hunger by saving 20% of the grain. Now, if you're into business, that's what should be happening with your business as well. If you're a church leader like me, that's what should be happening with your church as well. When people have given their tithes and offerings, 20% has to go to a different account for investments. It can't be spent. If you're into business, that 20% is for your business expansion and new projects. That's how you grow. You can't spend it on operations. If you're an individual, that 20% is for your future investment. So, income, income, one, one is income, two is savings, three is assets. You don't just save, no. You purchase assets. You buy assets. Assets don't always have to be physical. You don't always have to be able to touch it. In Uganda, when you talk about assets, the only two things people see are land and buildings. There are other assets. There are government securities. They are taking a battering right now because of Corona. Uh, there are other, other assets. Okay? When you're buying assets, do your own personal research. Never take anyone's word for it, even me. Never believe anyone before you 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 throw your un, hard earned money buying bogus assets that you don't know how they work do your personal research and then when you buy the assets how you know you're to, you bought a good asset is they produce cash flow that's the fourth fundamental assets must produce cash flow thanks so much desire for for listing them for us uh -uh. no 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 uh, uh, desire number three is shares no, rather assets. Number three is assets. And then number four is cash flow. So it's income, savings, assets, cash flow. So those who joined us when I had already started, I'm talking about being masters of the fundamentals. When you go to watch a professional football game, a professional basketball game, a professional hockey game, a professional cricket game, the rules are the same. When you watch the Indian Premier League of Cricket. The rules are the same rules of cricket that applied when we were in Soga College Midi playing cricket using tennis balls on the paths of the school. The rules are the same. The rules in Champions League are the same rules. <laughs> the rules in Champions League are the same rules they use in Idudi FC, Kasangati Football Club, wherever. They are the same football rules that they use in primary school. The difference is one category are masters of fundamentals. Caroline Marsh, very correct. I am biased towards real estate producing cash flow. Yes, I remember very well. 
uh, your, your, your strategy of taking these houses and then remodeling them and making sure that they take more people and putting those incentives, uh, Wi-Fi, washing machine and all of that. And that's what I'm trying to teach people here that don't just have real estate that's sitting there. Your real estate must produce cash flow. Whatever asset you possess, the point is, does it produce cash flow? Non-cash flow producing assets are, for a lack of a better word, bad assets because the end game is cash flow. The end game is cash flow. If you can't produce cash flow, you, 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 then you, you, you have a dead asset. The idea is to sweat your asset. Your asset must be working for you. If you haven't read The Richest Man in Babylon, that book, read it. Read it. So, as those assets start producing cash flow, which is passive income, that cash flow just goes back into the asset to keep rebuilding the asset. I've told you here that... Uh, 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 I, I told you guys... No, I haven't told you guys. I was teaching another class. If... If, say, you're working and you follow these rules and you're able to save 20% of all your income and you invest it, even if the investment is giving you as low as 12%, at 12% return on investment per annum in 17 years, you'll be financially free. 17. If you get 15%, 14 years, you'll be financially free. If you get 20%, nine years, I think 11, 11, nine years, you're financially free. That asset at that percentage is able to give you as much money as you are making now without you working then. So I'll just go through the fundamentals again. I'll go through the fundamentals again. Yes, liabilities. Liabilities, those are the assets that don't produce any cash flow. You're spending money protecting the assets. They are squatters trying to take your assets then you have to get the police to go chase them then the, the file is lost eh, assets must produce cash flow otherwise they are going to be not good assets they will end up being liabilities so the four fundamentals again are income how do you get income you solve problems money is the reward for solving problems the low income states according to tf echo you shall be compensated according to the value that you bring to the market you are the one who brings the value to the market and you are the one who gets compensated. So the only person responsible for how much money you make right now, even in this lockdown, is you. It's not your boss. It's not your mom. It's not your teacher. It's not your pastor. It's you. And the quicker you get to that reality that you are responsible for what you're earning, the quicker you can do something about it. Because what you're earning is a result of you. It's the value you bring. If people choose to pay you 2,000 shillings, that's the value they think you bring. If they pay you 20,000, they think that's the value you bring. If they pay you 2 million, that's the value you bring. The point is, what's the value you're bringing? So, you shall be compensated according to the value you bring to the market. That's point one is income. You create income by bringing value. You don't make income by, by making demands. No, no, no. You make income by bringing value. When you keep give people value, they'll give you money. That's how it works. Yeah, when value leaves you, value is about to come back to you. That's the law of value. So, income by delivering value to savings. How much of that of your income should you save as a bare minimum? Twenty percent. If you're going to be really, really wealthy, you can as well reinvest seventy percent of your income. You give ten percent. You tithe ten percent. Give ten percent. Spend ten percent. Reinvest seventy percent. But anyway. As a start, 20%. Then three, you purchase assets. Don't just save money in the bank. Inflation will chew it. Okay, so you purchase assets and make sure you're purchasing assets that produce cash flow. Those are the four fundamentals of what I call the wealth cycle. So those are the fundamentals. So if you're going to be successful, become a master of the fundamentals. That's what I wanted us to talk about. All right, I still have four minutes. Questions, comments, complications? I'm open. I'm, I'm here, reading.